My only observation about this whole discussion is the one thing you cannot have is a government shutdown. It would be politically beyond sh stupid. Ooh, the long-simmering Republican civil war is about to boil over again because Donald Trump is publicly calling for a government shutdown. Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says that is beyond politically stupid, and Republican Speaker Mike Johnson is desperately trying to find his balance, and the whole thing is glorious and we have to talk about it. But before we do, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, this is good stuff. This is good reality TV show, Real Housewives of D.C. drama in the Republican Party and now in both chambers. And the consequences could be absolutely damning for the Republicans electorally. Here's the context. We'll get into the full details after I give you the juicy bits. But the government is yet again on the verge of a government shutdown. We have about 12 days to avoid a government shutdown, and we are behind the eight ball because exclusively of House Republicans. Long and short of it is Donald Trump wants a government shutdown if he doesn't get a ridiculously unnecessary provision in the budget bill. So this is what he says. And he said this just a few minutes ago. If Republicans don't get the SAVE Act and every ounce of it, they should not agree to a continuing resolution in any way, shape, or form. Democrats are registering illegal voters by the tens of thousands as we speak. They will be voting in the 2024 presidential election, and they shouldn't be allowed to. Only American citizens should be voting in our most important election in history or any election. A vote must happen before the election, not after the election when it is too late. Be smart, Republicans. You've been pushed around long enough by the Democrats. Don't let it happen again. Remember, this is Biden-Harris's fault, not yours. For context, the SAVE Act is an unnecessary federal proviso in uh, this budget bill that would effectively make it illegal for non-citizens to vote in federal elections. Spoiler alert, it is already illegal for non-citizens to vote in federal elections and has been explicitly for 30 years. I should also point out that non-citizens voting in federal elections against the law is a statistical blip of a blip of a blip of a blip of a blip. It is a solution in search of a problem, okay? And of course, as a result, there's no evidence that Vice President Harris or President Biden are trying to register undocumented immigrants or non-citizens because, again, it's against the law to do so. Now, in response to this, we'll get to how Mitch McConnell responded to this, but this is what uh, Mike Johnson had to say earlier when asked about, you know, the, the shenanigans going on in the House of Representatives and whether or not he was willing to allow or facilitate a government shutdown to please Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah. But to follow up on Monty's question, would you listen to Trump and let the government shut down? If, I mean, this bill is not going to pass, likely. I mean, there's 15, well, there's over 10 Republicans that have said they're going to vote against it, so... I mean, will you let the government shut down? We'll see what it, we'll, look. We'll see what happens with the bill. All right, we're on the field in the middle of the game. The quarterback's calling the play. We're going to run the play. I'm very confident. I know that all the Republicans believe in election security. We have some people who dislike CRs. You know what? I dislike continuing resolutions as well. Right? But here's the problem, and everybody needs to remember: it is not the House. It is not the House majority. It is not House Republicans that put us in this situation. It sure is, because House Republicans made a deal with President Biden back in May of 2023, after you all took the majority, on a full budget, not a continuing resolution, let alone a series of continuing resolutions, a full federal budget, and House Republicans alone reneged on that deal. So again, unfortunately, this is one of those situations in life where there actually is no gray, there is no ambiguity. It's a black and white situation. Democrats are right and perfect, and Republicans are the bad guys 100% in this situation. They should have honored the damn deal. They chose not to. That's on them. And good on Democrats for not caving to Republican demands. Instead, if Mike Johnson has to turn to Democrats to save the federal government, then Democrats should proverbially break it off in him and say, we'll help you, but you will do what we want. You will give us one, two, three things, and you will be happy about it. We will get our way. That's exactly the attitude that Democrats should bring to this. It should be Republicans who are forced to bend the knee. Now, in response to this, in response to Donald Trump publicly demanding that there be a government shutdown, this is what Senate Republican Minority leader Mitch McConnell, probably the closest thing to a brilliant strategist that the GOP has, this is what he had to say on the topic. Uh, Susan Collins said yesterday that a six-month CR could have a devastating impact on defense spending. Do you think your House colleagues should drop this idea of six-month CR and do a three-month CR until December? 
I think we first have to wait and see what the House sends us. My only observation about this whole discussion is the one thing you cannot have is a government shutdown. It would be politically beyond stupid for us to do that right before the election because certainly we'd get the blame. And um, one of my favorite old sayings is there's no education in the second kick of a mule. We've been here before. Um, I'm for whatever avoids a government shutdown, and that'll ultimately end up obviously being a discussion between the Democratic leader and the Speaker of the House as to how to process avoiding government shutdown. Leader McConnell. So there you go. In so many words, Mitch McConnell just called Donald Trump beyond politically stupid, given that Trump is the prime advocate for a government shutdown. This is no doubt going to exacerbate tensions in the Republican Party because Mitch McConnell dare criticize the grand cult leader himself. More information. House Republicans poised to reject funding bill with government shutdown right around the corner. Speaker Johnson's plan calls for a six-month funding bill tied to Trump-backed voter ID legislation. Government will shut down on October 1st if Congress fails to act. House Republicans are expected to derail their own plan to avert a government shutdown at the end of the month with the party divided over the length, the length of a short-term funding bill and what, if anything, could be attached to it. Mike Johnson's plan calls for extending uh, funding at current spending levels for six months through March 2025 and linking it with the SAVE Act, Donald Trump-backed legislation requiring that people show proof of citizenship to register to vote. The funding package is on track to fail given Republicans' razor-thin 222-11 majority and the fact that a number of GOP lawmakers, a mix of fiscal conservatives and defense hawks, have vowed to tank it. Democrats who want a clean three-month funding patch with nothing attached and nearly all plan to vote no. Many oppose the SAVE Act, noting it's already illegal and rare for non-citizens to vote. Wednesday's vote comes a, a week after Johnson yanked the exact fu same funding package off the floor because it lacked enough GOP support, but he's decided to press it forward again. You see what I'm saying? It's just continuing shenanigans that they have been doing, by the way, for multiple continuing resolutions. They've not been able to successfully pass a single funding bill right out the first attempt. Like They constantly are, have been running into this uh, when McCarthy was Speaker of the House and since Johnson's become Speaker of the House. They are so incredibly incompetent. Okay, Keeping the government funded is the basic bare minimum duty, not the standard. It's the bare minimum of what a competent government should be able to do. And Mike Johnson's Republican Party, Donald Trump's Republican Party, can't do it. They objectively, objectively, beyond question, suck at governing. They really do. You can say whatever you want about Republicans, even if you're socially conservative, even if you think there are too many, I don't know, black mermaids, black elves, whatever it is that drives social conservatives these days, even if you're so sympathetic to the dumbest idea that they have, they just objectively suck at getting stuff done. They do. They're good at taking power. They suck at wielding power. They are infinitely objectively inferior to the Democratic Party in that respect. Nancy Pelosi would not have us here. Speaker Hakeem Jeffries would not have us here. Chuck Schumer, Democratic majority leader in the Senate, doesn't have us here. So as people who are watching, if you're eligible voters and you intend to vote in November, this should be a major factor in your decision to vote. Who is actually competent at wielding the levers of government to keep the government afloat? Democrats, objectively, by far. The, I think it is, oh, what is the name of this website? It is, I think it's, um... It's a, the, the Citizens for Responsible Fiscal Budget. Yeah, sorry. CRFB.org. Think about there for a second. They have a really good uh, web page about government shutdowns. And again, this is from a relatively conservative site. It's from a fiscal conservative site. Discretionary funding for fiscal year 2024 will expire on September 30th, and Congress has so far enacted zero of the 12 full-year appropriations bills to fund the government. So it goes into a list. What is a government shutdown? Uh, many government agencies and programs rely on annual funding appropriations passed by Congress. Uh, in a shutdown, federal agencies must discontinue all non-essential discretionary functions until new funding legislation is passed and signed into law. Essential services continue to function, as do mandatory spending programs. What services are effective in the shutdown and how? Each federal agency develops its own shutdown plan following guidance released in previous shutdowns and coordinated by the 
Office of Management and Budget, okay? And it goes into mandatory spending subject or not subject to annual appropriations such as Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid continues. However, those checks may be delayed. That funding may be delayed. Technically, the programs continue, but they are furloughed to some respect. They are shrank. They are reduced. Although many programs are exact, the public is still likely to feel the impact of a shutdown in several ways. For example, in a full shutdown, checks are sent out, but benefit verification as well as card issuance would cease. While unlikely to happen again during the 1995-1996 shutdown, more than 10,000 Medicare applicants were temporarily turned away. Eat the uh, environmental and food inspection. During the 2013 shutdown, the EPA halted inspections for 1,200 sites that included hazardous waste, drinking water, and chemical facilities, and the FDA delayed almost 900 inspections. National parks, air travel. During the 2018-2019 shutdown, air travel was strained as a result of air traffic controllers and TSA agents working without pay. Travelers face longer lines. Guys, it goes on and on and on. The IRS, SNAP benefits, SNAP benefits, food stamps. They are also affected. This would be absolutely devastating for the American people. But Mitch McConnell's made it clear. He knows this is the one of the few times that the American electorate is relatively rational. Republicans have almost always been behind government shutdowns. And when they've happened in the past, the Republicans have been blamed publicly and suffer politically. It's one of the few times that the American people keeps their eyes on the prize. Oh, you were the ones who caused the shutdown? Well, we're not going to blame Democrats. We're going to blame you. And an election is right around the corner. So that is why Mitch McConnell is so concerned and he's so willing to publicly call out Donald Trump and call the idea that Trump champions a government shutdown beyond politically stupid. Because Mitch McConnell is smart enough, and I suspect Mike Johnson is too, that no matter what their fear of Trump may be, if a government shutdown occurs, it may very well cost them the presidency, the White House, and the Senate in November. So... In the meantime, you let me know what you think in the comments.